OK, let's do a technical version of our analogy, and we'll see that in reality things are very similar to our restaurant example. Let's imagine that you run an online food ordering company. Instead of me ordering at a table, I'm going to order from my laptop. So, although I'm ultimately ordering the food, let's say my laptop is the one making the requests. My laptop, or maybe even my browser, Google Chrome, is the client. Instead of going straight to a person, my request is going to go up to the internet, to a machine, to a server. Just like the server in the analogy, that machine is going to do a set of logical checks. It's going to ask other machines, other servers, the same questions as before. First, the server consults a menu server, which is backed by a list of dishes stored in a database to check if the items I asked for exist. Then, it asks a payment server to take payment given my card details. Well, what next? In our analogy, the server went to the kitchen to place the order, and there's no reason that can't happen here. Maybe the takeout restaurant has a printer in their kitchen. In this case, the server will send a request to the printer server to print out that order. And the printer, the physical printer which is connected to the internet, will send back a response saying, yep, I printed the order. Here's a fun question for you to think about. What or who does the printer send a request to? And what happens when they receive that request? Once again, let's freeze frame to notice a couple of patterns. Firstly, remember that each of these entities operates in isolation from the rest. As far as they're concerned, they send and receive requests and they don't have to worry about how the others work. This is an interesting idea because it means it doesn't really matter that my request came from a laptop specifically. You could have a completely different kind of client making exactly the same request to the server. The server doesn't mind if it came from a mobile phone app instead of a laptop. And while we're at it, the request might as well come from a smart TV, a Samsung fridge, a self-driving car or a brain implant. So long as the request is in a form the server understands, the server will process the request. We call this consistent form a protocol. Defining and agreeing these protocols is core to a lot of software work. So that's the web stack. When we talk about full stack engineers, we mean people who can work on any of the components within this stack. When we talk about front end engineers, we mean the people who work mostly on the client. And when we talk about back end engineers, we mean people who work mostly below this dotted line. What about DevOps and data? Well, let's imagine that all of a sudden we have a lot of devices making requests to a single server. Maybe it's half time at a big national sports event and a lot of people are ordering their pizzas. This server is going to get overloaded. There's only so much it can handle at any one time. Any delay to handling requests will ultimately lead to the client and the user waiting a long time, staring at a spinner or an hourglass on a page. And so it's quite common for us to try to increase the number of servers that can respond to requests. Sometimes we do this dynamically. For example, it's more likely that we'll have lots of delivery orders in the evening rather than in the morning. So we might auto-scale our system depending on the time of day. This sort of dynamic increasing or decreasing of the number of servers available is one responsibility of DevOps. What about data? Maybe the server needs to send back a list of recommended items. Well, so far the only servers we've met are ones capable of doing dumb logical checks. We need something far more intelligent to generate recommendations. Just like some servers may have a database built into them, some special servers may have a data science model built into them. That model will be able to take an input, perhaps a list of dishes the user has enjoyed, and give back a rich, seemingly intelligent answer, for example, a list of dishes the user might enjoy in future.